Hello students, uh, in this video I am going to solve Groff's question, MCQ's question of Groff's, okay. So let's start. Question first is, the values of displacement, velocity and acceleration of a vehicle can be deduced from the graphs representing its motion. Often the areas under these graphs are the gradients of the graphs are used. What would not give a value for the displacement, a velocity or an acceleration? So you can see uh, in the first option, area under the velocity time graph, that uh, we have to find what would not give a value of displacement, velocity or acceleration. So, you know, area under the velocity time graph is, what is that? What does it give? It gives displacement. So, that give displacement. So, out of these three options, displacement, velocity and acceleration. So, the right A, A is effect and we have to find uh, not. So, gradient of displacement time graph that gives us velocity and gradient of velocity time graph gives us acceleration. So gradient of acceleration time graph doesn't give us displacement velocity or acceleration. So right now our option is D, okay? So let's go towards second question. What gives the value of body acceleration? The area under its displacement time graph? No, it doesn't give anything. Area of displacement, displacement in time is no physical quantity. Area under its velocity time graph, that gives us displacement, okay. So the gradient of displacement time graph gives us velocity. Gradient of velocity time graph gives us acceleration. So we were interested to find about acceleration. So gradient of velocity time graph gives us acceleration. So let's go towards third question. We are given a displacement time graph of a toy car as shown. On the vertical axis, you have displacement. On horizontal axis, you have time. So you can see from T0 to T2, the gradient, you know, the gradient of displacement time graph is, uh, is a velocity. So velocity till, uh, first two second is constant. Then the velocity in from two to four is zero. Then, then you can see the gradient in this part is negative and it is constant and over here velocity is again zero. So which graph shows the variation with time, time of time of the velocity V of the car. So we have to find the graph for the velocity time graph and we are given the graph for the acceleration time, uh, sorry, displacement time graph. So velocity for the first two seconds should be uh, the gradient that is rise over run. So two over two, that is one. So over here for the first two seconds, velocity should be one, okay? Then over here, velocity should be zero. And uh, you can see out of these two options, A or B, Velocity in, as you consider A, the velocity till two second is one, then velocity is zero, then from six to 10, velocity is also zero, okay? So what about the displacement, uh, sorry, gradient from four to six seconds? Gradient in this part, what should be the velocity? So the rise is, if you want to find the gradient of this triangle, the rise is four and the run is two. Rise is four and the run is two. So four by two is two. The gradient of this part is negative and it is equal to minus two. And you can see it in option A, 
that the gradient or velocity from 4 to 6 is minus 2. So that's why A is correct. You can see why B is not correct. Over here, you can see from 0 to 2 second, velocity is not 2. It is 2 over 2. It is, it is 1. So you can eliminate just looking at the first part, first two seconds. And you can also see other two options. You can see from C, the velocity over here is minus 1. But we know that the gradient of this part is positive and it is 2 over 2. So don't, uh, so no need to check other options. You can see D as well. The gradient uh, in this part, the gradient is, the gradient is a negative. But over here, we are having a positive value. So that's, uh, that's true. Let's go towards uh, question four, which graph represents the motion of car that is traveling along a straight road with a speed that increases uniformly. So speed increases uniformly mean acceleration should be constant. If a speed increases uniformly, you know acceleration is the gradient of velocity time graph. So if the speed, speed is the magnitude of velocity. So if the speed increases uniformly, that means acceleration should be constant. Okay, acceleration should not change with time. So if you look at option A, you can see that with the ref, with as the time passes, acceleration remains same. Okay, so A is the correct option. Over here, if you look at option B, the acceleration increases uniformly. If the speed increases uniformly, that means acceleration should be constant. So over C, in C, you can see displacement time graph. The gradient of displacement time graph gives us velocity. So constant gradient of displacement time graph means the velocity of this graph is constant. So if velocity is constant, then acceleration of this graph should be zero. Okay. So in D part, displacement is not changing. So this show uh, the graph of a body that is at rest. Okay. Over here, acceleration increases uniformly. So speed increases uniformly. If the object is moving along a straight road, then the speed and velocity are the same thing. It is not changing the direction. So let's go towards fifth question. A stone is dropped from a height of 20 meter above the water. This is a water surface and stone is dropped somewhere here. And that initial height is 20 meter. The graph shows the variation with time of the velocity of the stone. You can see from this graph, initially the velocity of the stone was zero. It was dropped. So velocity increases uniformly because the acceleration due to gravity is constant. So the gradient of velocity time graph gives you acceleration. And we know that there is no air resistance. Uh, so the velocity should increase linearly. Why does the velocity decreases suddenly to a new value? Because when it hits the, okay, the graph shows the variation with time t of the velocity. When the stone hits the water surface, then the, the speed of the stone will decrease. You can see the speed over here is decreasing because there is some upward force that is known as upthrust and the downward force is weight. Viscous drag is also acting in the upward direction. So as a result, what will happen? The upward forces are now greater than the weight. So the body will decelerate. As a result, speed of the body will decrease. So as the speed of body will decrease, then uh, viscous drag force will also decrease. So eventually, the body will reach to a new constant velocity. 
So which statement describes the approximate position of the stone four second after it is dropped? So we have to find the uh, position of a stone when it is dropped. Uh, so after four seconds, okay. So now you can see from this graph, the area of this graph, area of the velocity time graph will give you displacement, okay. And uh, the stone is dropped from the height of 20 meter. You can see from this graph, it is at this, let's, let's see the first option. It is at distance of 10 meter above the surface of water. After four seconds, it is not above the surface of water. It has gone into the surface of water, below the surface of water. Okay. So it is a distance of 10 meter below the surface of water. Okay. Now, that is the distance which it moves when it is under the surface of water. Okay. So, we have to find the distance when it moves under the surface of water. And you can easily verify that area of this triangle should be equal to almost equal to 20 meters because it is dropped from a height of 20 meters. And you can see the area is 1 over 2, base, base is 2. Let's ignore this small thingy, okay? So base is 2 and uh, the height of the triangle is 20. So approximately it is 20 meter. Okay. So at this point, it hits the water surface. Then over here, it moves inside, moves inside, and then it achieves an, another constant velocity. Okay. So what is the area of this part? What is the area of the last part, you know, it is a rectangle. So area is base time height. So base is two, height is five. So that is 10 meter. Let's ignore this small value. You can see from here, there is, you, you can also consider this value. Th that value, okay, this. But we are assuming that this is a rectangle and we are not worrying about the small. So we have to find the approximate. So we got 10 meter. So this is, the stone is 10 meter below the surface of water. The stone is 10 meter below the surface of water. Okay, so B is the right answer for this question. Let's move towards question number five. Six, sorry. A car accelerates uniformly from velocity u to velocity v. You can see over here, this is initial velocity and that is final velocity. And velocity time graph is a straight line that shows a uniform acceleration. On the graph, which area equals to the distance traveled by the car in time t? So we have to find distance that the um, that the car travels, and you know that the area under this graph is equal to the distance. Okay. So how to find this area? The area over here will be. Let's uh, check each and every option. Area of NPTU. What is NPTU? That is N is this PTU. This area plus PQST. PQST. That is this whole area. So this is not the correct option. Our answer is area under the graph not the whole area, okay? So what about B? N, P, W, V, N, P, 
this that shows this area plus v r s u that is v that is r that is s that is u so this area you can easily see this is the extra part in that area but we have missed that part so we can say this area is equal to that area so if i put this area over here then i will get that area so that's why b is the right option why not other options you can check them let's see c part npwv npwv this area plus wrst w r s t that is this area okay so if i consider this uh, due to as a compensation of this area then this is missing area okay so that's why it is not true p s t p s t i am going to discuss fourth option PST. Where is PST? You can see PST. That this triangle plus PQS, P and uh, QS. That triangle. So these two triangles are not the sum of these two triangles area is not equal to this area. Okay. So that's why. D is the right answer for this question. So let's go towards question number 10. Sorry, not 10, 7. Two identical cars, P and Q, are traveling along a straight road. Car Q is traveling at twice the speed of car P. The speed of car Q is two times the speed of car P. Okay. So the brakes are applied to both cars, producing the same constant deceleration. Which graph shows how the velocity V of the car varies with time T? So over here we have velocity time graphs and in velocity time graph the gradient is acceleration and if the velocity is decreasing at constant rate then it is deceleration and we are told in the question that the deceleration of the both cars is same. Okay. So we can easily see if the deceleration is same or constant sorry then the velocity time graph should be a straight line portion. So it should not be curved. So we will not consider D and D. In B and D, the velocity time graph is curve path that shows the acceleration is changing. So we have to look both A and C and they have the same deceleration. This That means they have the same gradient. So in A, you can see the gradient of P is more than the gradient of Q. So we will ignore that. And in C, C is the right answer because P and Q both have the same gradient. And the velocity of Q is twice the velocity, or the velocity of P. So that's why C is the right answer for this question. Okay, G. Let's go towards question eight. An object falls from a tall building. The graph shows how the velocity of object changes with time t. On vertical axis, we have velocity. On horizontal axis, we have time. And you know that velocity, the gradient of velocity time graph is uh, acceleration, the acceleration of free fall is G. What describes the acceleration of object at time T equal to Y and T equal to Z? 
So we have to compare acceleration over here. Acceleration at this point and acceleration at that point. So you can see over here, the acceleration is zero. And at that point, acceleration has some uh, non-zero value. Okay. So at Z, acceleration should be zero. So we will ignore these two options. We will eliminate these two. And uh, at point Y, what is happening to the acceleration? Is it constant or is it decreasing, increasing? What can you say? The gradient at Y is decreasing from the previous gradient. You can see from here. Wait a second. You can see gradient over here is high, then the gradient is decreasing, decreasing and gradient becomes zero. So acceleration at Y is decreasing. So you can say the option B is correct. Okay. Acceleration at the start is maximum, then acceleration decreases and it decreases to zero. Okay, let's move towards question nine. A radio controlled toy car travels along a straight line for a time of 15 seconds. The variation with time t of the velocity of the car is shown below. Okay, so from t0 to t10, velocity is 3 meter per second. That is constant value. And from 10 to 15, velocity is minus 6. That shows the object has changed its direction. The variation, okay, what is the average velocity of the toy car for the journey shown by the graph? So for average velocity, you need total dis displacement over total time. So for the first 10 second object is moving in one direction and the displacement it covers in one direction is equal to the area of that part and area of this rectangle is 10 times 3 that is 30. So object moves in the forward direction a distance of 30 meter. Then object comes back because the direction of sign of the velocity changes and the area of this part is 10 sorry 5 is the base, uh, length is 5 and 6 is height of this rectangle. So again 30 meter. So that shows object has reached to the same original point. Displacement, overall displacement becomes 0, which means the average velocity should be 0. So average velocity is total displacement over total time. That's great. So let's go towards question 10. A car at rest in a traffic queue moves forward in a straight line and then comes to rest again. The graph shows variation with time of its displacement. Over here you can see is displacement and over here it is time. Displacement is in meter, time is in second. So the car is at rest till this time and then car moves with uniform velocity and then it is at rest again. So what is the speed while it is moving? So speed is the gradient of displacement time graph. If car moves in a straight line in one direction, then displacement and distance are equal. And the, we have to calculate the speed and that is equal to the gradient of the displacement time graph. And gradient of this triangle, sorry, 
gradient of this line will give us speed. So that is equal to rise over run. So that starts from 30 meter and ends at 70. So this length, this height is 40 meter and time is on the horizontal axis, you, you can see one small square is equal to 10 seconds. So that is one, two, three, four, five. So that is 50 seconds. So 40 over 50, sorry, 40 over, that is equal to 40 over 50. So that, is, that will give us the value of speed, which is equal to 0.8 meter per second. 0.8 meter per second. So that is true. Let's move question number 10. A person stands on the edge of high cliff that is next to sea level, C. The person throws a stone vertically upward. A resistance acts on the stone. The stone eventually hits the sea. Which velocity time graph best shows the motion of the stone from when it is released until it hits the sea. Okay, so we have some, this is cliff or somewhere, C is somewhere here. So person throws a stone in the upward direction. It moves in the upward direction and then it lands on the surface of C. So, a resistance is not negligible. That shows the acceleration over here is not constant. And uh, the velocity time graph can't be a straight line. If you can see option A, over here the velocity time graph is a straight line. And the gradient of velocity time graph gives us acceleration. And that shows acceleration is constant. But when the air resistance is not negligible, then air then acceleration is not constant. Okay. Then you can see initially the velocity of the object will be in the upward direction and it will have the maximum value. Then its velocity will decrease, decrease. Eventually, its velocity will become zero at the top. Th then as it changes its direction, then the sign of velocity should become opposite. Let's say if this velocity is positive, then the downward direction should be considered as negative. So you can see in C, the velocity has the same sign throughout. So that's why this is not the right option. And in D, the velocity is also, sign of the velocity is also same, which shows the that which shows that it can't be our right option. As we know that the velocity, initially the velocity is maximum, then velocity decreases, then the sign of velocity changes as it changes its direction. So that's why B is the correct option for this question. Okay. Initially, the velocity has some maximum value and it the velocity is negative, 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 and it becomes zero. So what is happening? He is taking upward direction as negative, and then downward direction as positive. This is uh, his sign convention. Then after reaching at the top, velocity increases, increases, increases. Okay, so the gradient of lasting time graph gives us acceleration, and acceleration over here is not constant, acceleration is decreasing because of the air resistance. Initially, there is no air resistance. Okay, so that, that's why acceleration has the greatest value. As it moves, uh, sorry, initially, the, there is a maximum air resistance. I'm sorry, air resistance depends on speed. So initially, speed is maximum, so maximum air resistance. As it moves up, the speed decreases, so air resistance decreases. So then as it moves down from here, speed increases. So 
but the air resistance is now in opposite direction to the velocity. Question 20, question number 12. A ball is released from, wait a second, okay. A ball is released from rest above the horizontal surface. It strikes the surface and bounces several times. The velocity time graph for the first two bounces is shown. Initially, uh, the velocity of the object as it is dropped from some height, and that is the surface. So the velocity of the object is zero and it increases at constant rate because the air resistance is negligible. When it hits the surface, the velocity becomes maximum. Then as it bounces in the upward direction, then the sign of velocity changes and it has maximum value. So from here, it's first, after first bounce, it is moving in the upper direction and it reaches at the top at 0.5 seconds. Then it comes down, comes down and uh, reaches at the bottom with 2 meter per second. So we have to find what is the maximum height of the ball after first bounce. Okay. Okay, so area of the velocity time graph gives us displacement and uh, over here we have first bounce and it is moving in the upward direction after first bounce. So area of this graph, this part, this triangle will give us the maximum height of the ball after the first bounce. Okay. So that is area is calculated. This is right angle triangle. So base is 0 0.2, that is in second, and velocity is, sorry, this side is 2. So 1 by 2 base into 2, that will give us 0 0.2 meter. Okay. So if the examiner asks us to find the initial height from where it was dropped, then the area of this part, this triangle, will give us the initial height. Okay. The area of this part and that part is are equal. And as why they're equal? Because after first bounce, it covers the same height and then it comes down the and covers the same height, same distance. The curve line PQR I wanted to check the time wait a second I think my screen 